Winter is coming and normally I talk about what I wear when I'm outside doing adventures. But this year we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to talk about what I wear inside. And that is because I live in a medieval house. When it was built in the 1400s, the idea of a heating system was to have livestock living in the ground floor, which would the heat of which would radiate to the floors above and keep people warm. The idea of the kind of insulation we have today, the double glazing, all that kind of stuff doesn't exist. Well, quite frankly, I can't afford to put it in. I've got no oil, no gas. Uh, so the only option to heat this house is by electricity, which is really expensive. When I'm at home during the winter, I try to wear clothing that is going to allow me to stay warm without having to stick the heating on too much. And this is what I tend to turn towards. So I'm going to start at the feet and work to the top and uh, just get talk a little bit about why I wear and use each of these items of clothing. To start with socks, uh, these are Bridgedale Heavyweight Merino Endurance Socks. I have used these for nearly every adventure I have done. They have been my hiking adventures, they've been on my ski touring adventures, they've been on my mountaineering adventures. I always use these summer, winter, it doesn't matter. I love these socks. The merino nature means they don't smell. The thickness makes them comfortable, but also very warm. So if you're looking for just a pair of socks to turn to, then these are the ones I would suggest. I don't like walking around my house just wearing socks because it does wear them out pretty quickly. So I have these Ayacucho uh, 3M Thinsulate slippers, which have got little grips on the bottom, and I use these as my in-house uh, slippers. They're amazing, get them, they, they really don't cost very much, and they're incredibly comfortable, so check these out. When it comes to trousers, I tend to go towards, away from my jeans and all that kind of stuff, and towards more what I use for hiking, just to wear around the house, because they just are a little bit warmer. The absolute go-to for me are these mountain equipment Ibex trousers. I absolutely love them. They're thick, they're comfortable, um, they have a belt, they have little pockets everywhere, they have air vents. Um, I even use these for skiing, um, so they go from walking around the house to keeping warm to all the way to skiing adventures. Um, they have uh, these great little uh, kind of zips on the bottom of the legs so you can expand it for boots and stuff. So around the house I find them an incredibly comfortable pair of trousers to, to use. My house gets incredibly cold in winter so I do tend to switch it up a bit and use these mountain equipment Kinesis trousers. These are amazing. So they will keep you warm, so warm, with this lovely fluffy interior. Uh, just wearing them is a joy, uh, sometimes too hot, uh, which is all right because they have these vents that go right the way down the legs. So um, again, these are a pair of trousers I use when adventuring, mostly ski touring, but around the house when it's really cold, this is what I wear because it's kind of, it's like having a hug. If you want to do a bit of layering, then you can go with something like some Merino everyday uh, base layers from uh, icebreaker. I'm not the biggest fan of um, base layer on the bottom, just find it a little bit constrict constrictive, but when I'm skiing and when I'm snowshoeing and I'm staying in tents and extreme cold, then I do wear these. Um, but just as an everyday thing, I don't need them. If you need something else to keep your legs warm, go to them, but I think if you've got the kinesis pant, you ain't gonna need these. Boxer shorts. I use these Saks boxer shorts. I love Saks boxer shorts. I find them very comfortable. They're well fitted. They keep you nice and warm. They uh, perform well when you're out hiking. They perform well when you're at home. So it's a good pair of underwear to wear on a kind of for just every day. When it comes to the top half of the body, um, it depends how much layering you want to do. Obviously, the more layers you wear, it's kind of good for keeping warmth in, trapping it in, build up layers, you, you stay warmer. So I use different t-shirts as the base layer, depending on what I'm gonna do. If I'm just wearing a t-shirt and a jacket, um, I would get, probably go with something like this. This is a mountain equipment t-shirt, which is, um, it's got polyester, tensile, and elastane. Um, it's kind of slightly stretchy. Um, and it's very soft uh, and very comfortable. So I love wearing this t-shirt. If I was gonna match it up with something like a hoodie uh, or just straight with a jacket, uh, it's a great t-shirt to wear. 
If I wanted to cut down on my washing bill, then I might go for this. This is the Icebreaker uh, t-shirt, Merino t-shirt. I used this during the summer for the seven days challenge. Used it for seven days, still didn't smell at the end. So if you're looking for something you wanna wear all week, this would be a t-shirt to go for. If you are gonna go with more of a layering system with something a bit more active like this, then I would suggest the Icebreaker 175 Merino Crew t-shirt. It's a really good base layer. What I like about it is it's not trying to be anything fancy, it's just a grey t-shirt that you can wear under shirts, you can wear under hoodies, um, it's not got any logos on it, it's just a warm merino t-shirt which is going to keep you warm. So once you've got your t-shirt on, the next layer up can be a gilet, this is the Patagonia insulated gilet which is incredibly comfortable and incredibly warm. Um, it can be a little bit too warm sometimes in, in, in the house. Uh, something like Rab have a slightly lower profile, kind of slightly thinner uh, gilet, which is very good. Um, but uh, yeah, a gilet will keep you warm. I feel if you keep your engine warm, your core, it's gonna help you keep your extremities and everything warm. So I always really focus on like having a t-shirt and then a gilet, because it just keeps that central part of your body nice and warm. If I'm wearing something like this, I might go up to a Mountain Equipment Lumico hooded top. Uh, I really like this if I'm doing stuff around the house, which is going to be a bit more movement rather than just sitting at my desk. Um, it's got a lovely kind of inside, it's all kind of bobbly, so it traps the heat in. Uh, it's well fitted um, and it's comfortable, it comes with a little hoodie. Um, it's a great um, top for something like in a layering system. If I'm sitting at my desk and I want to go for something a little bit more loose fitted, then I might go for something like this Fjall Raven hoodie. Um, it's got a lovely kind of fluffy inside which keeps you nice and warm and it's very comfortable. Um, it's got zips here, it's got zipped pockets, it's got a hoodie, it's got kind of reinforcements on the elbows. It's just a very, very good hoodie. Keeps you nice and warm. On the rare occasions when I'm wanting to be a little bit smarter, maybe wear a collar, then I'll go for something like this organic cotton shirt from Patagonia. It's a very kind of classic design. Uh, it's not trying to be too shouty, uh, but it's gonna keep you warm and it's going to make someone like me look a little bit smarter. In January, February, March, it can get really cold here, uh, especially in my house. So I have been known to use this on a regular occasion. This is the Montane Featherlight insulated jacket. This has been on many, many adventures with me. It is my kind of go-to for warmth in the evening uh, and has become my go-to for warmth in my house. So check it out. It's really nice. It's quite, quite um, fitted, which I like. Uh, it has a nice hoodie. Uh, it's got good length sleeves. It's not too thick. Uh, the insulation pads are kind of nice and thin, so it's not, it doesn't feel too bulky when you're wearing it. It has a breast pocket with a little bag to keep it in. Um, so yeah, around the house, sitting on the sofa watching TV, this is probably what I would wear. For my head, I, I'm known to pretty much wear a cap all the time. Um, so I wear a hat like this, I like the trucker hats. But when it gets a little bit colder, I will reach for something like um, this, which is the Fjall Raven um, woolly hat. Uh, it's a nice thick one. Uh, it's the 1960 icon. It's just really warm. And if you, we all know that if we trap the heat in up here, then it is going to help keep us warm. So something like this is something I go to during the colder winter days. Last but not least, uh, a neck warmer. It has been known for me to, to get to the point where I need to wear a neck warmer and something like this. This is a buff original. It's really nice and thick and it's going to keep you warm around here. A lot of heat can escape from this part of your body. So if you have something like this on, it is going to keep you a little bit warmer. When I got to thinking about gloves, I thought, no, I just, if I get to the stage where it's so cold in my house, that I have to wear gloves, I am going to crank up the heating, I'm going to spend the pounds, I'm going to put a log on the fire, whatever. I am not going to walk around my house wearing gloves. So this is what I wear to keep me warm on cold winter nights. I'll try and help keep those energy bills just a little bit lower. I hope this was useful. Go down below and I'll list every single item of kit I've talked about here and you can go and check it out at Cotswold Outdoor. Have a great winter.